Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing NAD's brand new C399 integrated amplifier. This 180 watt stereo integrated amplifier is astonishing. It is a trickle down, in fact it's got more things inside from NAD's Master Series than it has from its Classic Series. This wonderful implementation of an amplifier should be way more expensive. It features NAD's brand new N-Core Hybrid Digital Amplifier. It's the best of the best. Most manufacturers would, would strive, would work all their lives to achieve what NAD is doing in such an affordable little box. There's a 32-bit, 384kHz ESS DAC on board. Uh, it'll, it'll easily peak and control 250 watts into, into a speaker. It's got A and B speakers, but look, most importantly, it's the first in the range to feature uh, NAD's new MDC2 slots. Now this is a logical upgrade of the modular design that NAD has been providing. It's reverse compatible, all of the older stuff will slot in very very easily, but it opens the door for another protocol, an upgrade, a, a future yet undelivered yet, so that NAD can produce these modules and keep these products current forever. So, let's have a look. NAD Classic Series is always boxed in pretty muted, average looking boxes. They've added the NAD logo and colour and the rest of it is brown with black writing. The units have scannable model and information on one end, along with the other of course, um, and a line drawing of the front of the unit. On the back we have a line drawing of the back of the unit. Uh, giving an implementation, uh, sorry, an example of what is inside the box. What's standard in New Zealand but unusual to some markets is the addition of this little sticker. In New Zealand, these are opened pre-delivery, and the uh, universal or international power cords are removed, and a New Zealand power cord is added. So this has probably been opened, but again, it's going to be delivered. Uh, sorry, it's going to be an example of how it's delivered to you. Unboxing these is very, very straightforward. It's a simple enough process as far as nicking and opening the factory packing tape. The top, to ensure that that sort of knife drag uh, doesn't necessarily damage anything underneath, is protected with a piece of thick cardboard. Once opened, we get to see some of the bits and pieces that are inside. Firstly, and off to one side, we see a basic brown cardboard box. And that's where we see the New Zealand power cord. It's a um, IEC 3 pin. On this side, we see a few more of the little things uh, from an accessory perspective with a sleeve and closed cell foam revealing NAD's remote control. Now this is a universal remote. We've seen it in all of the classic series. It's a, it's a basic remote control, yet functional. It's got a good fit and finish, and the batteries go down the middle, so it's a well-balanced remote. Also in the accessories are uh, an aerial associated with the Bluetooth, and a set of AA batteries. At this point, taking the unit out of the box is very, very straightforward. The closed cell foam sort of moulds and moves a little bit as we drag it out. bottom of the box we've got a big desiccant bag to keep it dry. We start to see the product itself. It's, pro it's protected by large chunks of moulded clothes cell foam, moulded to even the uh, slots associated with the uh, binding posts and other things we'll see on the back of the amplifier, and of course the feet. Getting it out from that is very, very easy. And we see um, the basics of warranty and other uh, basic connection information in a little um, how-to guide. Getting into the next layer is relatively straightforward. It's sealed closed with a big circular sort of sticky tag 
and opening that is very easy as far as a little knife across it. It's also the front is protected with a little piece of um, sort of very soft um, polish cloth, ensuring the front of the unit remains scratch free no matter how much uh, vibration or other uh, incidences this may occur in the front. We'll pause and just briefly have a look at the bottom of the unit, which sees four beautiful little feet with some rubber, uh, rubber seals on them. The front of the unit at this stage is relatively boring, because most of the improvements and guts of it are inside. It's a significant improvement in both amplification and uh, amount of amplification over the previous model. Um, and cements NAD yet again as world leaders in its price point. The front uh, features a uh, relay controlled um, on off and an NAD logo. This is a, a, a chog control with the ability to navigate any number of different setups and please hang around because the display is full colour and it allows us to uh, navigate very easily using this. There's an up, down, left, right and enter in the centre. There's a six and a quarter headphone socket and it's actually not a bad headphone output given uh, the amount of emphasis most brands put on amplification only. In the centre above the screen we've got a hybrid digital and the model number which of course is the C399. Over here uh, we have the source left and right and now allowing you to quickly uh, skip through the sources that you wish to listen to. And in the setup you can turn off unused inputs to ensure that you can skip between only what is vital. We've got another rotary encoder for the volume and it's got a nice little fit and finish. Nice elegance to it. Tipping it forward we see a couple of things. Firstly a lot of ventilation. The units are, I mean any of the hybrid digital, are uh, extremely efficient. I mean they're injecting power only when it's required. But of course at high demands and high volumes it's going to get slightly warm so it's nice to see a good implementation of ventilation. The second is the MDC or Modular Design Construction logo that we see in the corner. At the back we've got a warning and that's associated with connecting the speakers that we'll see in a moment's time. At the side we'll see a relatively boring sort of side panel but it does give you an implication of the depth of this product. It's a little bit uh, obviously deeper than some of the uh, smaller units that the NAD produce and very in keeping with the, um, the lesser model. At the back as always, it's where the magic happens. The classic series is designed to be very muted from the front and let all the work being done at the back. Over here we see a ground and that's for not only the phono preamp but also should it be, uh, should an additional amplifier be added. There is an IEC 3 pin uh, power input along with a fuse beneath and a good quality rocker switch for the on and off. The amplifier has A and B speakers and that's clearly delineated and very uh, uh, carefully coloured as far as red for positive and blue for negative. The caps here can be removed relatively easily with a fingernail to reveal the additional input for a banana. We have dual subwoofers and the setup enables basic crossover management as well along with traditional stereo pre-out, and this can be useful for any number of things, active subwoofers, uh, ins and outs, you name it, but most importantly, you could pre-this out uh, to an additional power amplifier if required. There are two basic line inputs, a phono input for your turntable, and then we've got two coaxial digital inputs and two optical digital inputs. There is an HDMI for audio return, as there's a number of people who are connecting their televisions, and with Netflix and other streaming services being hugely popular, the HDMI audio return has become a standard now expected with most, and it's good to see that an amplifier of this a sort of value is incorporated, it, uh, incorporated with it. Above it is kind of boring stuff. Well, we've, firstly, we've got the antenna associated with the Bluetooth. We've got a factory reset button, and a USB for the purposes of servicing or software updating. There's RS-232 for two-way control, and then a series of IR inputs and trigger in and outputs as far as cascading control for other devices both in and out. Most importantly, what we see over here is two MDC modular design construction slots. 
It's here that we can easily implement uh, NAD streaming or Blue Ops. Uh, multiple HDMI inputs, uh, high-end asynchronous USB, all in a modular card. The card itself is standardized and it's across the entire range. So all of these things can come and go as you choose to change your requirements or update and upgrade as other system preferences change. And it's this that means that this product is not only mighty in its performance from a sound perspective, but genuinely good value because tomorrow something new will come along and you are not forced to replace everything. Just one slot or one card can be introduced or replaced, giving you an almost infinite opportunity to upgrade at your leisure. So, there we have it. NAD's brand new C399 integrated amplifier. 180 watts in-core hybrid digital amplification. Elegant and simple in its design, brutal in its performance. Happily unboxed here at the listening post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.